All right. Okay, we've got being comfortable. Wow. Okay. Welcome everyone to Wellbeing in Education. Okay, thank you, Shiken. Being happy and healthy, yes. We all want that. Alma says that. Tulasi, being emotionally and mentally in a good state. Rajveen, a balanced state of mind, body, and soul. Very good answers from our participants. A holistic, balanced lifestyle with Henley. A positive lifestyle, being balanced in everything. Wow, yes, I agree with that. Really hard to achieve, but that is exactly what well-being is, as you all have mentioned in the chat, those who have typed something. So sometimes we need to sit down and think about what is our understanding about well-being? So to continue, I want to reflect on the new norm settings in education. Classrooms, CPT, meeting rooms, holiday or leave locations. All of a sudden, it's all in one place and that's our homes. And that has an impact on our well-being. What affects Excuse me, sorry, sorry for that. What affects well-being in, in education? Of course, we look at all these different settings at home. After questioning some people and doing a survey, at home, the things that really bother people is adapting, having discipline, having the energy, to work at, from home during this pandemic and the motivation. Something else at the office, another setting, the expectations have changed drastically. There's a lot of fear. Some people fear they might get COVID or they fear losing their job. Leadership has just got a new set of rules. Uncertainty the uncertainty about what tomorrow will bring from day to day has got a big impact on well-being in education. At home, online. Online, it was interesting to see what people answered. They said actually online, what really impacts them is the competition. It's not enough that the internet itself presents a lot of competition for educators, but then sometimes they have to compete against other colleagues, against other schools, and it just, it, it, it affects the well-being. Communication, this miscommunication because there's no one-to-one, one-on-one -one, one -on -one communication between colleagues. Everything is online. You either have to make a phone call or a WhatsApp, or you have to attend a webinar. Connectivity, everywhere in the world is problems with connectivity. Creativity, how creative can we get delivering education during this pandemic? It has really stretched us and it has really challenged us. Culture, we have different cultures and no matter who you are and no matter the culture at home, the culture you used to has never accommodated working from home 24 seven for everyone. So what are your concerns and expectations? And we're gonna put you into breakout rooms now. Now I know we don't all know each other, but we would like you to have a three to five minute chat just about what are your concerns and expectations in the workplace, at home? How would you like to see things turn out or address to actually impact your well-being in a positive way? So over to you, Hayley, to put everyone in a breakout room. 
Thank you. Thanks, Jasmine. Everybody is in groups of um, of four or five, and I've got at least one leaped person in each group. So if those people can take the lead on the conversation, that would be great. All right, uh, I'll send you off. Three minutes, right, Jasmine? Gone. Three minutes. It's going to be three, four minutes. Okay. Yes, Min, you are unmuted. The host just unmuted me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. And I would like to ask, um, is there anyone who would like to share the expectations or what the expectations of others were? Anyone would like to share? Rajveen? I just mean, right. we were in a group with uh, James and Leanne and mm -hmm. Henley. And I'd love to, I'd love Henley or Leanne to share a bit of perspective because I think Leanne got a, a cut off during the uh, end of the breakout room. So she might have wanted to add a little bit more. Um, Leanne or Henley, would you like to share some of your experiences uh, of, of some of the challenges that you have experienced, observed? Yes, Leah, you want to go first? Uh, up to you. <laughs> All right, I'll just say something. Now, um, this uh, well-being education attracts me because um, I have came across uh, teachers uh, who has uh, issues uh, which are personal or uh, professional. Uh, they are, they are, they're always saying the things like uh, the teachers are all doing very well, you know, and then there is no issue with the teachers, only with the students, which I found uh, not true because uh, we have to actually uh, tackle the issues among the teachers first. So firstly, uh, there are teachers who, who do a lot of things outside and then they are tired and then they are stressed out. When they come to school, they are not in top form. So we are, we are professionals, we are in a full-time job and we expect everybody to be fit and to be ready for the job. So that's why, uh, my expectation is high on the teachers and we try to do a lot of things. We, uh, I think uh, I follow the lead ed uh, principles. We go to the class, teaching and learning is the, the main, our main focus. And um, we, help, we try to help everybody to improve in every aspect in their teaching, learning, everything. So it's like we are trying to coach them and tackle the issues. And we also, uh, on Monday, we talk about the parents. So we engage with the parents. We try to get the parents on board to, to help the, the, the students at home and, and coach them and tell them what to do. And all these things that we have done in the school to help teachers to improve and parents to play their role. I think uh, uh, for the past three years before the COVID has been uh, very fruitful because uh, learning has been challenging uh, during COVID. And, um, and all this uh, building up uh, that we have done for the past three years actually has helped us uh, in the uh, learning at home online. Of course, our students have a lot of uh, problem with uh, gadgets, internet, and also um, uh, the learning at home because they are from the lower rank uh, uh, social economy. But uh, uh, I believe uh, it would have been much worse if we had not done our homework and uh, uh, building of our foundation. So I think um, I have learned a lot from the lip ed people and the, the principles and how you build up things. And we have, uh, you know, uh, try to uh, get our teachers to be in tip-top condition and uh, so that they, they are ready uh, professionally and personally and managing themselves well personally and professionally. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, thank you very much, Henry, for that. It's really heartwarming to hear that the work that we are sending out and the webinars and and uh, the, 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 the guidance we give for well-being is being implemented in your school. I know you're a leader, school leader, with a lot of experience and your sharing is really heartwarming today. Thank you so much. Leanne, did you- Yeah, additionally, I even went to our feeder school to give some talk and to help them out so that they also do well in their school. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much, Henley. Leanne, did you, you say anything? Uh, hi. Um, actually, um, I, I actually agree with Mr. Henley here because um, we all face the same problems. And um, 
actually the the type the topic of the discussion the topic of the webinar actually caught my attention okay usually i have um this siic um if i i think you know her betty uh, she has left for uk and she usually in, uh let me uh, she usually encourages me to join this webinar because i'm not with the lib app group at all but i do get information uh, through her off and on and this is one one of it that i i got through from the from my email so um i this this uh, topic actually caught my attention because it is really a struggle for us actually in school as well because um in sava we we do face this uh you know internet access problem and um to have students to actually learn full heartedly is actually um how should i say sorry for being blunt here but it's actually bull for them to learn because they do not really want the, um not majority of them but uh, there's a, a large group from my school they do not really want to learn and they are taking this as an advantage to actually giving us the reasons of like not being able to get access to the internet but um they were able to to, to do other things online as well so i i was a little bit um skeptical about that but benefit of the doubt um we do struggle with this problem um and for what i would say that my expectation it is not so much of my expectations uh at my work workplace but the ex the expectations of my administrators from the teachers you see so we are doing our best but we do struggle um tremendously to try and educate or to help our students actually but uh sad to say that only 50 percent okay uh 50 percent or lesser than 50 percent are actually getting what the teachers are doing you see the teachers are giving their 100 percent actually uh, 100 percent as in everything from modules to online classes to offline classes to everything and we have done our best but um we we are in the middle between the administrators and the students and i think the teachers i think the teachers would understand how we feel because i think every one of us would feel this not only in malaysia but as well as other places because i know that my brother who is teaching in singapore he also faces this, he also faces the same problem okay so um I think I'm rambling on too much, but I do wish to get to know more on how I can actually um, help my, uh, you know, um, to, to, to get things work out better through this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Thank you so much Lee, Lee. And you have touched on very important points. And the one thing that you've actually mentioned and that it is that it, it affects everyone. Singapore globally, people are feeling the sting. So for the sake of time, I thank you for having the discussion in your groups, in your breakout rooms. And I'm going to hand over to our speaker and guest, James um, Freeman, to actually touch on all those things that was just mentioned. Thank you so much, Jasmine, and a very warm welcome to everybody once again. Good afternoon. Uh, my horse, my, my horse, my voice is a little bit hoarse. I've been doing extremely amount of training this uh, month in January. So if I take uh, a sip of my turmeric, chamomile and honey tea is because I've just got to keep my, my throat coated, but I'm good to go this afternoon. And again, super excited to be with all of you here and hearing lots of the amazing comments and you know the sharing of experiences, uh, as Jasmine said, and as a lot of you've been saying in the breakout rooms, uh, we're all affected by this and we all have to kind of pull together as a team, regardless of where we teach and what we're teaching uh, so that we as an education sector can move forward in 2021. So I'm gonna hopefully come Cover these uh, three points in the next uh, 20 minutes or so before we hand back to Jasmine. So I just want to touch on a little bit on the basics. Uh, this whole idea of well-being and mental health is a, a massive subject and there's no way we can cover it in the short time that we have this in this afternoon. But I'd like to at least base, uh, put some bases and foundations in place uh, so that we're clear on what we mean by it and then how we can actually establish some good uh, goals and routine. So I'm going to cover these three points. Uh, the the, the um, discovery of a basic human psychological needs, uh, understanding really what is mental health and how it impacts us both in our personal lives and in our work lives. And then finally looking at goal, set, goal setting in terms of uh, a better uh, transition or a smoother transition, if you like, uh, between
between the balance of life and work. And again, if you have any questions or comments, by all means, put them in the chat box and uh, one of the LeapEd teams will be more than uh, healthy, happy to assist you. But let's kick off with the first part and this whole idea of 2020 and how it's impacted your ability to work effectively. So in the chat box, there, I'd like you to choose one of those words. So reflecting back on your experience when suddenly the education sector changed to this virtual learning setting, which really most of us haven't had much experience in doing. We're a lot more equipped now than we were a year ago. But if you think about it, when that sudden change took place, how did that impact your ability to work effectively? Totally, somewhat, or hardly? I'd love to see some of your responses in the chat box, just reflecting back on 2020. And again, this is a safe and open space, non-judgmental. This is uh, an area of mutual understanding and mutual respect and sharing. So again, feel free to share. So how did 2020 impact your ability to work effectively? Totally? somewhat or hardly. So I'm just going to transfer myself over to the, uh, so I can, lots of you already have put there totally, totally, totally. So I can think, I, I can safely say that we're kind of all in the, in the top end uh, of the category there. So yes, it has impacted the way that we deliver our lessons, the way we interact with our students, the way our, inter, uh, our students interact and respond to us as educators. And of course, if you are teaching in primary or secondary education, uh, the way that we also interact with the parents. And it is, it's, it's become a, a big challenge. Uh, like Jasmine said, our homes have become everything to us from taking time out, from working, uh, from being with the family, and of course, our personal life. So sometimes those lines can get blurred. Where does our work life begin? And where does our personal life start? And a lot of times maintaining that balance can be quite challenging, especially in this age where we're all connected practically 24 seven, it really never stops. And so it can be very exhausting. So thank you for all your fantastic comments on the chat there, absolutely. So we can safely say that 2020 at, from an education perspective, definitely has impacted our ability uh, to work effectively there. So let's think about uh, taking it right down to the basics. Think about your psychological, and when we're talking about psychological, we're really referring to this idea of mental and emotional needs. What would you say they are? So have a think. So in order for you to feel balanced in life, and I'm not just talking work related, just generally in life, in order to have that sense of well-being and balance in our minds, what do you think uh, would be some of your emotional or mental needs? Again, in the chat box there, I'd love to see some of your suggestions about what you feel that if, if for you yourself, and it's different for, uh, different for everybody, so we're not gonna have the same answers necessarily, but what do you think your psychological or mental needs are in this moment in time, in order for you to have that sense of balance with life in general there? So uh, we've got here social interactions, absolutely. Now that human to human contact has kind of been taken in a way in a very abrupt manner and so we're doing this all virtually which you know we're grateful for but it doesn't quite replace that human to human contact uh we've got here downtime so disconnecting from devices absolutely this is what i mean you know we're on 24 7 parents are messaging us students are messaging us it's a never-ending cycle uh less tech absolutely um there's all this talk about zoom fatigue we're spending a lot of hours staring at screens uh, connectivity social interaction empathy. Um, I like this one from Alma, self-care, be kind to yourself. Um, so Lisa says, need more rest. Absolutely. There needs to be the, uh, the, the, the discipline to plan to work, but also plan to rest. Uh, me time, getting away from ICT. Absolutely. So you can see a lot of similarities in what uh, the comments are coming through on the chat box there about what we consider as essential for our mental well-being. But I'd like to focus on what we call uh, the five basic human psychological needs. Now, there have been many, many uh, uh, studies and research done over the years uh, from people like Carl Rogers and William Glasser. We're probably one of the more, one of the more well-known reports on this aspect about uh, human psychological needs uh, comes from uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, they, and, and he specifically looked at uh, these five key areas. And this is really the idea of uh, love, being understood, a sense of belonging, and a sense uh, of achievement and a sense of purpose. So according to these uh, studies, these are kind of the five key areas that handled well and balanced well will really create that kind of sense of well-being in us as human beings. So I repeat, love, being understood, belonging, achievement, and purpose. So reflecting on those five areas, how do you feel that you have kind of 
uh, handled or, or been impacted uh, with those five key areas according to uh, these studies for basic human psychological needs. So for this one, I'm gonna ask you to uh, join me for a very quick poll. We're gonna go into VBOX. Uh, so it's a very easy app if you haven't used it before. I use it a lot in my training and working with my students. Um, so we're gonna do a quick poll. One, you are very dissatisfied. Okay, so you were really disappointed and felt let down by that particular emotional need. And five, very satisfied. And you can be in between. So you have that range of one to five. But I'm going to ask you to join VBOX for me, please. So if you've got a QR code scanner, you can quickly scan it. Or you can just simply type in vbox.app, open up a tab on your phone or on your computer. And the ID number to join this particular poll is 157 128 Five four six. That's one five seven one two eight five four six. And again, if you're unable to scan, no worries. You can just simply type vbox.app, and then it will ask you for a quick name, and then you punch in the ID number one five seven one two eight. Uh, five, four, six. So I'll give you a few seconds to join. And as I said, love for, for most of you to jump on there. Uh, the voting is totally anonymous. So there are no names shown whatsoever. It's just to get an idea as a group uh, to do a bit of reflection on how we have been impacted in 2020, considering those five basic human psychological needs. If you're unable to connect, don't worry, you can put your answers in the chat box in a minute when I show you the answers, but I'd like to encourage uh, those that can, again, to jump on using the QR code or uh, vbox.app and punching in the ID number. So while I give you a few seconds to join, I'm just gonna move across very quickly to the screen there so I can share that with you guys. And then I'm going to launch the poll in two seconds. Okay, good, I can see lots of you joining in there. So great stuff, guys. Uh, let me just move across. Good, all right, so let's start with the first one. So how would you rate your satisfaction with love? And now love can be very broad. It doesn't have to be necessarily romantic or intimate. It could be this idea of connection of friendships, your wider community. So how would you rate your satisfaction with love in 2020? And again, remember, totally anonymous, no names shown. It's simply just to get an idea as a group how we've been impacted in for this particular basic human psychological need. So I'll give you a few more seconds, lots of you putting your votes in, so I do appreciate the contribution. And remember, if you're unable to connect on VBOX, by all means, put your responses in the chat box so you can uh, join in on the fun as well. So Colette says, very satisfied. Absolutely. Well, I'm, glad, I'm very happy for you, Colette. Excellent, awesome answer there. And a few more seconds, and I'm just going to close this poll. All right, so let's have a look how we uh, did as a group here. So interestingly, we have a kind of few and dissatisfied, but overall in this category, uh, the satisfied number four came out as the largest one. Next one, again, the next one. Uh, how would you rate your sense of being understood? So did your family understood your struggles? Did your friends, did your colleagues understand your struggles in 2020? Again, how satisfied were you with that sense of being understood? So very quickly, if you can punch in your uh, responses in VBOX, and then uh, we've got some responses in the chat as well. So we've got, okay, okay, great guys, thank you as well. Uh, also, Colette said, very satisfied. Good, excellent. Uh, I'm going to close the poll down on screen as well. And so as a group, this is how we did. So a bit more mixed. But again, the satisfied category seems to be the overriding factor there. Great stuff, guys. A couple more super quick. So how would you rate your satisfaction with that sense of belonging? Did you feel connected to your team at the school or the university or, or wherever you work, your educational workplace? Uh, did you feel connected to your friends and family? How, how satisfied were you with that sense of belonging in 2020? Um, okay, so let's have a look. Uh, great stuff. So lots of answers coming through there. Good. Thank you so much. And let's have a look at how we did on screen as well. And so on screen, we're looking at, again, a mixed bag here, but a bit more divided out there. So we can see a wider range across the five different uh, categories there. And then uh, we've got this idea of achievement. So usually a lot of us tend to set our goals at the beginning of the year. So the goals that you set in 2020, did you have that sense of achievement or did this whole pandemic turn your world upside down? Again, how satisfied were you uh, with that particular human basic psychological need? Uh, and again, lots of comments coming through in the chat box there. So again, thank you uh, for your contributions. And let's have a look on the poll on screen here. So the sense of satisfaction in 2020 as a group, again, this time around, the middle one, the okay. So again, we perhaps had some aspirations, some goals, but again, 
life changed and threw us a curveball and suddenly we had to focus on another direction. And finally, your sense of purpose. So how would you rate your satisfaction with that sense of purpose in life? And it can be in work, it could be in your personal life, it could be in your spiritual life, whatever it is, but how were you in terms of your sense of purpose in 2020? So again, thank you guys for your contributions there. All right, so let's have a look. Closing this poll now for the final time, let's have a look how we did. So our sense of purpose in 2020. So again, a mix between okay and satisfied. So we can see from these results that again, we've all been impacted in varying degrees, depending on what we consider as being important uh, in terms of our, our personal well-being. And I think that's really important to have that time of reflection, look back and consider these five areas and start to make the necessary adjustments so we can handle the pressures better of this current climate that we're in in 2021. Thank you guys. So again, we're gonna, uh, we've set this idea of the five human psych uh, basic uh, psychological needs. Now let's shift gears and move over very quickly to this idea of mental health. The two, those two words, uh, again, tend to kind of uh, conjure up a response in all sorts of ways in different people in terms of their perception or their sort of thinking about what mental health is. So again, I'm gonna ask you to go in the chat. So if I say to you mental health, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? And again, remember, this is a non-judgmental space, open to any ideas, any comments. There's no right or wrong answers here. So it's us just sharing our experiences. So mental health, what does it mean to you when you hear these words? And again, it can be all sorts of uh, perceptions from your experiences there. But if you had to define it, if you had to express it in simplistic English, in simplistic words, what is mental health? So we've got compared to other job professions where it's luckiest educators to be able to find, oops, my, my screen has gone up there, but anyways, lots of answers coming in there, but thinking properly, sanity, uh, staying sane when the world turns upside down. I love that comment. Uh, having a positive mindset, absolutely. I fully agree with that. Being sane, absolutely. So I think we kind of captured the essence of, of mental health in that sense where everything around us has just suddenly gone all over the place. What was normal for us is no, not normal anymore. And suddenly we have to kind of make massive changes uh, to these new lifestyles there. So yes, great comments here. Equilibrium, calm, ignoring annoying things. Exactly, don't sweat the small stuff. Uh, ambiguity, absolutely. So again, really good comments there in the chat box. So I'd just like to establish this. Mental health, really, we're looking at this idea of, of including our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. If we think about it, the mind is like the motor of the body. Whatever we think in our mind, those thoughts is where it starts. It kind of manifests itself physically in some form, whether it's a positive thinking or whether it's negative thinking. So really, mental health is about how we can determine how we handle stress, you know, the things that go on around us, relate to others, and ultimately make those life choices or those decisions that really can make or break uh, a situation there. And I always say mental health is not exclusive to any age group. Those of you who teach early education, primary years, know the importance of emotional development in, in young children, particularly in young learners. So we know that this is really where we can establish some good thinking habits. But at the same time, we know that mental health translates right across the age group. So we, whether we're talking teens, childhood, or us as adults, we are all impacted to some certain degrees with this idea of mental health. So I'd like to do a little experiment. If you can let me uh, do this very quickly with you guys, I'd really appreciate uh, your participation there. We're going to focus on this idea of a wedding scenario. Um, or if you, if you want to change it to a family party or some kind of uh, gathering that you, we used to be able to do before the pandemic, but I'm going to use a wedding scenario today. So I'm going to stop sharing in a second. And for this activity, I'm going to ask everyone to keep their screens on if you feel comfortable turning it on. And I'm going to give you a scenario which is based at a wedding. I want you to listen to the scenario and then I want you to turn your screens off if your answer to that situation is, I'm fine. But if your answer is not, I'm fine, I want you to keep your screens on, okay? So I'm gonna repeat the instructions in a second, but I'm gonna stop sharing now. And if you could do me the awesome pleasure for those that can to turn your beautiful screens on, uh, I'd love to see some of your wonderful faces there. So good afternoon, everybody. Give me a nice wave, thank you. <laughs> awesome guys, oh, this is beautiful, I love it. I think, you, I'll let you into a secret. It's like 1.30 in the morning here in Ecuador. I'm actually um, 
connecting with you guys from Ecuador, South America. So I'm like trying to keep my energy up, not waking the neighbors because we, we live in an apartment block here. So I'm trying to keep my voice down so I don't wake the neighbors up. They're going to think, gosh, that guy doesn't stop working. He's like working all day, working at one in the morning. What's wrong with him? But anyways, I digress. Uh, thank you so much for turning on your screens, guys. Really appreciate it. So I'm going to share a scenario with you. Okay. So the idea is, remember, if your answer is I'm fine, I want you to switch your screens off, okay? But first listen to the scenario and then we'll see what your reaction is to this particular situation. So imagine you're at an amazing family wedding. So cast your minds back to an experience that you've had maybe a family gathering or a family wedding. And the speeches have just finished and you're chatting with your extended family. You've got your grandparents there, maybe your auntie, your uncles, your cousins, etc. And these are people that you haven't seen for a while. And during that conversation, you're catching up, just having general chit chat. And then during that conversation, uh, one of your family members asks you how you've been. Now, the truth be told, you have been struggling with your mental health. You've had you know, bouts of anxiety. Maybe you've had panic attacks. Maybe you've been dealing with depression, feeling overwhelmed. So you've been battling with all these different type of uh, negative mindsets or negative feelings. And it's no fault of your own. It's just because of the impact that the pandemic has had. So, but nobody knows about it, but you know that you've had to deal with these situations in a very profound way. So your family member asks you how you've been, you know you've had those mental health challenges. So keep your screens on if you feel comfortable to talk about your mental health challenges with your, with your family member at that moment in time at the wedding. Turn your screens off if your reply is to your, uh, to your family member is, you know what, I'm fine, thanks. And then move the conversation on. Okay, so we see a lot of you flicking the screens off. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's, that's super interesting. Okay, so great stuff. I'm gonna ask, let's go with, um, if it's okay with you, as I say, if you don't feel comfortable sharing, I totally agree, but uh, Janice, would you be comfortable to share very quickly why you switched the screen off, Janice? I don't know if she's there, Janice. Oh, oh I'm okay, okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Uh, hi, Janice. Nice to meet you. So very quickly, you, you switched your screen off. So, so tell me, how would you feel about discussing your mental health uh, challenges with, with a family member, Janice? Mm, because I feel that if, let's say, if we have a chance to share with people, sometimes we can get the ideals or, or some different thing that maybe can solve our own problems. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm Good. fine. I'm fine to share with people. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Janice, for your yeah, uh, contributions there. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Excellent. So again, this is all about our own sense of, uh, you know, what we feel comfortable doing. So again, a couple more questions I'd like to ask. So if you can uh, really humor me and turn your screens back on again, guys, this is an off and on activity there. So thank you again for your contributions. So I'm going to read you a couple of other statements. And again, um, I want you to turn your screens off if this is something you have done, okay? So my first uh, statement to you guys is, uh, turn your screens off if you have visited a dentist in the last couple of years. So in the last 18 months, year and a half, you have visited a dentist. Turn your screen off. So in the last couple of years, I appreciate maybe in the pandemic, you didn't go out to see a dentist because you wanted to be careful, but in the last two years, you visited a dentist, okay? So a few of you have turned your screen off, okay? Fantastic, okay, everyone's screens on again. Uh, very quickly. My next statement is uh, turn your screens off if you've taken any type of medication, whether it was a paracetamol, ibuprofen, whatever it is, doesn't matter, nothing, nothing major, but turn your screens off if you've taken any type of medication in the last two years. Okay, so lots of you flicking off. Okay, I would be switching my screen off as well. I had a really bad headache the other day, so I took something. So yeah, absolutely. And the final question, let's turn our screens on. And my final question to you is turn your screens off if you are absent due to physical ill health in the last two years. And again, any reason. So in the last two years, you were unwell physically. So you had to take a day or two off. So turn your screens off if you were physically unwell for any reason. Uh, you had to take some time off uh, work. Okay, so I see a few of you have flicked your screens off there, guys. Again, thank you so much uh, for uh, contributing it. And I'm gonna to explain to you a reason why um, I've decided, I, I, I did this uh, uh, little scenario with you because Again, we have this kind of a stigma, if you like, when it comes to this perception of uh, mental health, but also physical health. 
Imagine I just asked you these questions. I'm not going to ask you to turn your screens off and on now, but imagine if I asked you these questions. Turn your screens off if you saw a mental health professional over the last year. Uh, turn your screens off if you took psychiatric medicine over the past year. Or turn your screens off if you were ill due to mental ill health. Suddenly, these questions take on a very different persona or creates a very different perception to the ones that I asked you when it comes to physical health. And this is something that, as particularly as educators, we kind of need to break that taboo. I, I, I always say it's, always, it, it's fine to feel bad. It's fine to have those struggles. We need to normalize this situation in the sense that it's okay to open up about our feelings. Obviously, you know, being wise of who you express your emotions to. But the idea is we need to work closely as an education community and understand that the support systems for well-being are paramount to the success of how we're going to move forward in this virtual learning setting. So I'm going to give you three questions and I'm going to put you into your breakout rooms. Again, super quick conversations because I appreciate we've only got about 15 minutes left and I don't want to overlap my time. So I'd like you to focus on these three questions. Um, the, how are the questions on mental health different from the ones uh, about physical health? Uh, question two, what are some, why are some things harder to talk about than others? And finally, three, which for you is easier to talk about mental or physical health and why? And again, remember, this is a non-judgmental space. We're all respectfully sharing our opinions and listening to each other carefully and responding in a way that encourages one another. So I'd like you to maybe take a quick picture of those three questions if it's easier or take a uh, note them down super quick. I'm going to open up the breakout rooms now. And again, you'll have three to four minutes just to have a quick open discussion with your colleagues. And then we'll come back on the other side just to, uh, for a quick summary point uh, based on these three questions. So your breakout rooms are open now. Uh, so if you can join in as quickly as possible, uh, that would be absolutely awesome. And if you do need assistance, uh, use your raise hand function. I'm sure one of the Leap Ed team will be able to jump to your rescue there. So the breakout rooms are open now. And again, take a picture of those questions and uh, have an open conversation with your colleagues concerning mental and physical health. I think, um, yeah, for the rest of you in the main rooms, I've sent you the requester in case you weren't able to allocate to a room. So if you can join in, thank you so much. Great stuff, everyone, and welcome back. And again, thank you for your transparency and being able to uh, discuss this, uh, what can be quite a sensitive topic when it comes to mental uh, uh, health and well-being. there. So I appreciate it. And again, um, I know we're kind of running out of time here. Normally when I do these well-being workshops, they're around two hours uh, because it is a massive area that we need to explore as the education community. So I'm just gonna ask one of you very quickly uh, to um, uh, just give me a quick, quick summary in terms of some of the points you uh, discussed in your breakout rooms. So uh, I think uh, Tulasi, I think it is. Yeah, I've just asked you to unmute your mic. Good afternoon. Yeah, Hi there. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, so could you give me two quick points uh, that you kind of picked up in your discussion there in the, in the breakout room there? I think uh, one of the things we agreed on is in a group was the cultural acceptance towards admitting mental health. Um, if, over the years, society has eventually become used to things like learning disabilities, their children having ADHD. We've come to admit it and we know how to seek for help. But the problem is we've not reached those levels with mental health. You know, so the moment that we realize society has uh, is able to accept it, it becomes a norm, then people will be able to admit it openly and seek for help the way that they need to uh, or need to be supported. So that was our discussion next week. Excellent. Thank you so much. And nicely put there, very concise there, Tulasi. Really appreciate it. And absolutely, we need to normalize this idea of talking about well-being. So my closing statement is just think about this. Imagine when you were, you, well, we, when we used to be able to fly regularly, those of, those, those of us that did fly, uh, when the, air, uh, the cabin crew used to put on the uh, ma oxygen mask and the idea was, uh, you know, if the cabin pressure drops, put on your oxygen mask. And usually, or what they always say this, Put your oxygen mask first before you help others. Why? Because if the oxygen levels drop in, a, in an aircraft uh, to dangerously low levels, we become unconscious. And then when we become unconscious, we're unable to help others. I always tell teachers, likewise the same. Let's not neglect our well-being first. It's not being self-centered. It's not being selfish. Because if we haven't got energy, if we haven't got petrol in the tank and our car runs out of petrol, we're no good to others. So I always say, put your well-being first so that we have the mental and physical physical strength to help others. And we need that more than ever in this very challenging time. So I'm gonna leave you guys with these six questions if you wanna take a picture of it. It's all about reflecting uh, the impact of well-being at the workplace. Again, I'm really sorry for cutting this short. Normally, as I said, we would have explored these questions a little bit more, but just take a quick picture um, so that you can have this and take it away and have these open and honest discussions
discussions with your work colleagues uh, in your places of work. Again, this idea of balancing mental and uh, work health, uh, particularly with this uh, virtual learning setting that we're in. So finally, remember at the beginning, we looked at those five uh, psychological human basic needs. Uh, we had love, uh, obviously we had being understood, sense of achievement, et cetera, et cetera. So when we think about work, we're obviously not going to necessarily go to our workplaces or be interacting with work colleagues necessarily to find love. But those other four basic human psychological needs can work very, very well. So that sense of being understood. Again, in your workplaces, we need to look at this idea of clear channels of communication across all levels, from the principal, vice principal, uh, secretary, down to whoever manages the team of teachers, and ultimately the actual teachers that deliver the curriculum or the, or the syllabus. So there has to be that sense of transparency and openness. Achievement. So is your work being recognized and actively commented on? Now, I don't mean that everything you do is going to be praised and everything is going to be great. The idea is that somebody, whoever is uh, mentoring you or supervising in your area of work, that your work is being recognized, your effort is being recognized, but at the same time, your areas of strength and your areas that you need to build on, again, are being commented on so that you have a clear path in terms of your progress uh, as an educator. The sense of belonging. Are you connected to your colleagues, albeit virtually, but is that sense of com communication and connection taking place even in this virtual setting? And finally, your sense of purpose. Going into the school year in 2021, are you being given clear direction and work goals and expectations of what you want to achieve over the next nine to 12 months as you teach and work with your students online? Okay, guys, I'm going to hand back over to Jasmine. Again, thank you so much. And I, I really apologize for going over my time a little bit this afternoon. And uh, again, I wish you guys all the very best and good luck for this 2021. And remember, it's okay to talk about our feelings. It's okay to share them. And again, creating this uh, open dialogue definitely will help in creating those balances uh, for our well-being. Asmain, over to you. Uh, Jasmine, I don't know if she's disappeared. Oh dear, what's happened to Jasmine? <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I can touch on this because this is briefly uh, something that we were going to go into, but I'm not sure, maybe she's lost connection. Yeah. <laughs> I am yeah. Can you? Oh, okay. Is. Okay. <laughs> okay. There we go, Jasmine. So um, I'm going to stop sharing, Jasmine. I'll give it back to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. So basically, in a nutshell, if we look at um, what James have just been discussing, um, sorry, just hold on. It seems like the technology is failing us, but we'll keep going. I would like to. Because of time, I would like to actually focus on what, how do you prepare yourself for 2021? It's by setting goals. And if we think about setting goals, in education, there are a few things that's really important. Health, of course. First, positive thinking. And I've made a point of saying, I need to think positively about life. You look for the positive in everything. Even if you're gonna to be told off or you didn't do something, or you're overslept, or you cannot sleep, look for the positive in everything. It's to connect and connect properly. Social internet interaction, learning, self-evaluation, fitness and health. What is a well-being recipe? I think it's important to have a well-being recipe for everybody. Number one, think of the knowledge you still need. The skill set. Building relationships, professional relationships, pri prioritizing needs, teaching and learning methods. Online has changed everything. And what are you doing to serve and succeed? Would all these ingredients help you to have a more positive well being? I'm going to reflect on a well being recipe. And when you have a well-being recipe, you need to be mindful of what you want to achieve, right? So for me personally, I'm gonna put myself out there. I need to improve my knowledge about web design. I need to develop improved skills to host and manage tech in Zoom effectively. I need to build and invest in my professional relationships with my colleagues. I need to prioritize and be available to answer and 
send short emails daily at a set time. I need to um, think about the online training and teaching methods to keep the audience engaged more. And I need to listen and share knowledge that is relevant with people I serve for optimal success. So what, what I'm doing, I'm putting myself out there, but I, I want to show, if you want to think about well-being in education, you need to be specific and you need to set smart goals. Be specific, make sure it's achievable. Make sure you have a time, a, a time, a, a, a time span in which you want to achieve it. Make sure it's measurable. We all know the SMART indicators. So for me, that works. A well-being recipe and being mindful of what I want to achieve by being specific. On that, I want to thank you all for coming firstly. And I want to get, acknowledge James because the content of the slides 9 to 21 has compiled. Our next webinar is on the 24th of February and it's about special educational needs. This webinar will be in Bahasa Malayo. There will be English people um, to, to answer questions in English, but it will be in BM. LIPEX initiatives um, this year or currently, the hot ones are Lipid Academy, Cyberware is coming up, Watch the Space, Child Protection and Safeguarding, and Lipid Bright Ideas. Please visit our website to visit and, and find out more about these initiatives. Now, the last thing is I want to talk up to you about the certification. You will get a certificate for the attendance of this session, but you'll have to complete the feedback form so that we can get your name right on your certificate. I will share, I'm gonna stop share quickly, and I will share the link to the feedback form now. Just give me one minute, my computer is acting up. All right, coming. Please give me a thumbs up if you see it in the chat. I'm gonna give you all a few minutes to actually copy that. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you see it in the chat, please. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the thumbs up in the screen. So yeah, so well-being is very important and I think the most important thing I want to conclude with here is like, well-being starts with self. If you want to be well, you need to start with self. And sometimes it's not about what do I need to be getting from my leadership or my colleagues, it's what I have to give to make well-being work for me and for everyone else. Thank you so much for attending today. Feel free to visit our website and um, um, register with Bright, Eyes, Bright Ideas in our Telegram group so that we can see you at our next webinar. Thank you very much.